Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today's lesson is about post-transcriptional modification of mRNA. So first let's talk about where this process happens. It happens in eukaryotic cells. Remember that there are two major cell types that all life in the world can it is one or the other. Those are eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And so today we're talking about eukaryotes, which are the animal cells and plant cells and fungal cells and algal cells uh, and not bacteria or archaea cells. So post-transcriptional modification of mRNA happens in eukaryotes. So we know about the processes of transcription and translation. Remember that transcription is where the mRNA is made from a DNA template, and translation is where that mRNA is taken to a ribosome where it is then translated into protein. So we're very used to thinking that transcription makes mRNA. But that's not quite the right way to say that. Actually, transcription makes pre-mRNA. And again, this is just in eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotic cells, transcription makes mRNA. But in eukaryotic cells, transcription makes pre-mRNA that then must be processed post-transcriptionally, meaning after transcription, into mature RNA. And so what kind of processes are happening during that modification uh, process? And there's three. Uh, one is that a five prime cap is added. So a five prime cap is a specially altered nucleotide that is added to the five prime end or the starting end of the mRNA transcript. Also at the, at the other end of the transcript, at the other end from the five prime cap, there is a three prime poly A tail. And so what's the purpose of adding these things? We're adding this specialized cap and this specialized tail. The poly A tail is so named because it is made up of several adenine nucleotides. So adenine is the A, poly is because there are many A's in a row. And so what's the point? Well, they get added to protect the transcript. And that is that in eukaryotic uh, cytoplasm, there are factors, uh, special enzymes known as RNases that will chew up uh, single-stranded RNA, that will, that will recognize single-stranded RNA like mRNA as this bad foreign thing that needs to be degraded. And this is an evolutionary answer to viral infection. Many viruses use single-stranded RNA as their genetic material. So if they infect the cell, then there's lots of viral RNA in the cell and the cell tries to degrade it. So those same enzymes can actually hurt the mRNA transcript. And so the cell adds a five prime cap and a three prime poly A tail to either end of the transcript in order to protect it from these enzymes that would otherwise degrade it. Now there's a third process that's important with post-transcriptional modification, and that is called splicing. So what happens is that part of the pre-mRNA transcript gets spliced out. The parts that get spliced out are non-coding parts, meaning that they don't code for protein, and they are called introns. So introns get spliced out. The parts that are maintained, that are kept in that final mature mRNA transcript are called exons. And exons are the coding regions of the mRNA transcript that are kept because they actually code for protein. And so here, you can see that we have a pre-mRNA transcript. The parts in white are the introns, the parts in black are the exons, and after splicing, you get all of the exons joined together and the introns have been removed. Let's talk a minute about the name intron and the name exon because there's a way to help you remember which one is being spliced out and which one is being kept. 
and that is that intron takes its name from intervening sequences. So they're the sequences that are intervening or that are in between the exons that are to be kept. Exons get their name from expressed elements. So the EX and exon and the EX and expressed mean that the exons are the parts of the transcript that are later going to be actually expressed in protein. And that's because they are joined together, they are kept in the final mRNA transcript that then goes on to be translated on a ribosome. So now let's talk about a few other important points with post-transcriptional modification. And that is that each step, whether it is the five prime cap or the three prime poly A tail or the splicing procedure, these are complex processes that involve the activity of multiple enzymes. So just as an example, within the five prime capping procedure that adds that specialized nucleotide to the, to the front end of the mRNA to protect it, there are at least three major enzymes involved, and those are a phosphatase, a guanosyl transferase, and a methyl transferase. They each have different names because they have different functions that are, in, are part of that five prime capping procedure. If you're interested in learning more about enzymes in general, how they work, the factors that affect them, then please see my video on introduction to enzymes. Now, eukaryotic transcripts also tend to only have one gene per transcript. This is called monocystronic. And so each transcript, each pre-mRNA that's made, generally only contains the information for one gene that's going to go on. Uh, to code for one protein, except in cases of alternative splicing, which I also have a video on that you can see. Now, these modifications, when I say these modifications, I'm talking about the five prime cap, the three prime poly A tail, and the splicing. They do not occur in prokaryotes at all. They don't occur in prokaryotes because transcription and translation in prokaryotes, which are bacteria and archaea cells, these processes are coupled in prokaryotes. Coupled meaning that they're actually happening at the same time, and so there's not uh, a space and time for these kinds of modifications to occur. If you're interested in learning more about coupled transcription and translation of prokaryotes, then see, please see my video on that topic. And thank you for watching today. This is the end of the lesson, and I hope you will watch some of my other lessons on my biology professor channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.